16 homers in 99 games this year for Candelario. He'll play third, an OPS of 823. Like I said earlier, more than a three-win player already this year. So a massive upgrade at third base. Mm -hmm. So do you assume we're going to just see a lot of Christopher Morrell now at DH? And obviously I know he's played some left and they'll they'll move him around, right? If Dansby's out and Nico slides the short, then, then he can play second. But I'd imagine this, uh, in theory, can keep Morell out of the field. Yeah, but I think Mor- Morell is a DH and a super utility, giving people a spot start uh, every once in a while. Then maybe he ends up getting replaced for defense if he's not DH. Um, Nick Madrigal to the bench as a contact hitter and a capable defensive replacement at second and at third. Um, and still, I guess Trey Mancini will get um, some starts. He's getting a start tonight at first base. But yeah, I mean, Candelaro has got to play every day at third base. Every day. Well, because right today it's Nick Madrigal at third batting ninth. So just think about just I know it's a one game snapshot and, you know, this lineup's a little weird. Mancini's back in there at first base, mm-hmm. which seems unnecessary with put Talkman in center and Bellinger uh, at first. If you're ever inclined to play Trey Mancini at first base in a game it. one of a ge- series against the first place team. Yee, uh, yee. I, don't, I don't love that, but just like using today's lineup as a one game snapshot, Madrigal at third batting ninth, assuming Candelario is here by tomorrow. That's Candelario at third batting Fifth, fifth, sixth, something like that. Lengthening your lineup. Yeah. You know, it, it, yes, it, it, tremendous. And as a switch hitter, you know, it'll depend on the matchup. This year been much better against righties than he has lefties. Um, so we'll see what they do against against lefties. Maybe Madrigal will get a start every once in a while at third base. And maybe just bat him lower based on his like mm-hmm. splits, right? But here, here's what the Cubs gave up. They gave up a left-handed pitcher named DJ Hers, and that is the best of the two prospects they gave up. DJ D- Hers and Kevin Mays. Yep, uh, and Hers is a guy, he's among those who is eligible for the Rule 5 draft this offseason. So a lot of times you'll see teams pull from that kind of pool when they like trade a guy because they're like, we have a decision to make on this guy. Yeah. So w- we might as well go ahead and put him out there because we have a decision to make on him anyway. So, and he's not, he's not one of the best 20 prospects in the Cubs. Like, I don't even know where he's ranked, but I, I can tell you that he's not Ben Brown. He's not Kate Horton. He's not Jordan Wicks. He's not Kevin Alcantara. He's not Alexander Canario. Yeah. He's, like, he's not the first 15 to 20 names. He's not the first 10 pitchers that come to mind. Maybe he's the 10th pitcher that comes to mind. What's amazing is that that's what organizational depth can do for you. And we had John Morosi on an hour and a half ago, and he said that he was probably going to be the best bat traded at the deadline. And the Cubs got him. Yeah. I mean, say what you will about criticism of the Cubs, man. They're about 30% to make the playoffs right now based on the projection models. Mm -hmm. They were a clear-cut seller 10 days ago, and an eight-game winning streak has them dealing from organizational depth for the best bat on the market. It's awesome. At the biggest position in need in the field. That can't ask for much more than that as a fan. I'm not... You can ask for more in terms of like preseason expectations and offseason expectations and you shouldn't have had to be a seller for a couple of deadlines in a row and all that. But in terms of pivoting quickly and then being aggressive and, and plugging a hole on your team, yeah, that's about as good as you could ask of them. They kept saying, we think we're better than our record has shown. And then they started to win a bunch of games in a row and the record got better. Jed said to us, get near 500 get towards the top of the division and here they sit above 500 and within four of the division and they go out and they do this an aggressive acquisition and yes yes i'm sure fans are digging it you know who's digging it too business side business side is probably very much digging as your direct to consumer app I mean, I'm seeing people, like random people tweeting and Facebooking about, well, I picked up the marquee yeah. DTC app because the Cubs are playing well. Right. And, and here you go. Here's another couple of months where that app all of a sudden makes a lot of sense for cord cutters who have uh, not gone down that road before. Yeah. Haven't had the chance to. Well, 
it's exciting, man. They're, it's a wild spot because they lose tonight. They're exactly 500 and they're five out the, on the day of the deadline. In, in with two teams to chase in the division and three to leap in the wild card. Yeah. So you know, by no means are we assured October baseball. No, not at all. Like it is still more likely than not that we won't get it. But they have cleared the lowest bar, which is they got to the trade deadline still in contention. They were buyers instead of sellers, and they will play meaningful games in August. We'll see if they make it to September and then October, but mm-hmm. they, they will they will play meaningful ball in August. I bet Jed will say something like, this club played well enough to deserve an influx of talent and to deserve to stay together. That kind of thing. Yeah, they, and, they earned it. And, and they've known that's what they needed to do as a team, and they've had that kind of subtle sort of major league thing that happens at the deadline times. Like, they want to break us apart. Let's show them that we're good, you know, and you get that collective chip on the shoulders. Not necessarily adversarial, but it's just, let's just show them. And then they've played really, really good ball. They've played good ball. They've won games. And they've earned uh, a, a right to stay together and earned a right to have an addition or two mixed in. I bet they're not done. I bet you'll see a lefty reliever. A lefty reliever and a switch-hitting bat who can play third base with 16 homers to start the year. If that's what you're adding. That's a great deadline. That's honestly more aggressive than I expected them to be. Yeah, Candelario is bigger than what you said at the top of the show, a small yeah. buy. Yeah, this is the, this that's is not a, a small buy. I mean, he's not a, a big super, buy. He's not a superstar. Mm-hmm. He, he is not under contract next year, so if you want to keep him, you got to sign him. But it gives you a leg up on signing him, in theory, if you want him to be here long term. Man, we, we spent so many weeks talking about how is Jed going to sell to ownership? Hey, I'm going to have to sell, even though we're trying to head in the right direction. How is Jed going to sell to the room? Hey, we like you guys. You guys are feeling good. You're playing okay, but we're going to have to sell. Or say to the fans, you know, we told you that we're trying, but we're just not quite there. We're going to have to sell. He doesn't have to explain any of that, no. No. None of it. No, it, this is much easier. It's much, much easier. <laughs> this much is, more fun. This is much, much easier. Uh the series begins tonight. What we're expecting for the series against the Reds, and when when can Candelario get here? Can he can he pinch hit? Well, it's even more interesting than that. <laughs> They're gonna put him on a. Flight. They're gonna put him on a plane. No, they, I know, but I mean, they took him out of the lineup today. He was eating popcorn in the clubhouse, and he was in D.C. Is that right? Yeah. So that's what it's three hours here. Less. L- less with the time change. You're you're getting oh. an hour back, Danny. I like where you're going. I mean, can, can he can he pinch hit in the seventh inning? Of course, Ken Griffey Jr. pinch hit. Put the phone down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Who was telling us about that? That was great. Uh, Cl- uh, Cliff Floyd? No. No, it was someone else told the the story, and then we played it. Oh, uh, David Ross played a uh, midday show. Mid- yeah, 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 David, yeah. David Ross when he was in studio with, uh, da- with Lawrence and Layla. Hmm. Yeah. But now, uh, Danny Parkinson, like, what you're putting out there? A third inning arrival from O'Hare. After traffic. Oh, right. Oh, Harry's screwed. In uniform. Um, some hugs. Hello. Some welcome back hugs. And a pinch hit appearance in the sixth. Got to make a, you know, got to make a roster move if they're going to do that. Let's do it. Let's get Candelario into the game tonight. Who can he live without for the first couple innings? Nick Madrigal the whole time. <laughs> He's starting. 